Bonjour, it is another day in Paris and we are on the metro and there's a stop called Temple and funnily enough there's also a station in London on the underground called Temple. They're spelt the same and basically have the same name so it must mean it's time once again to go from point to point. So I am joined, of course, by two accomplices. I've got Will and Richard with me for this, uh, for, th for the Paris part of the trip. Uh, they won't be joining me to London, unfortunately. Perfect. We've timed this well. There's a train coming in one minute, so we don't really have to wait much. We've uh, left it a bit late. We uh, don't really have long for me to get to uh, Gare du Nord before I need to check into the Eurostar. So uh, we're under a bit of time constraint, but it should be fine. Why have we... Artimetier isn't on the way. Why, why have we got off here? No, it's not. Um, we're going to go to line 11 because there are some really, it's a really cool platform. That's what I've been told anyways. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take a look. He came up with the idea to go to line 11. <laughs> yep, and now we're going to wander down endless hallways. Yay, fun, fun times. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, Art Artimetier, it's... Got very nice design. Quite a few of the metro stations have got quite nice designs, don't they? Yeah, so this one invokes Jules Verne. You've got this very like 20,000 leagues under the sea kind of like brass plating based on the submarine from that. Um, and you've got these cool portholes on the walls as well. It's a very cool design. Um, you can also see the kind of gears coming down from the ceiling. Um, so it's a really nice design and you get lots of Paris metro stations that have these kind of real interesting bits to them. Yeah, it's great. This was a good idea to come here. Glad we paid a visit. What's quite interesting about the uh, metro is one of the lines we're on at the moment, number 11, uh, it has some rubber tyres, which in theory reduces the amount of noise on the surface, um, although I know some people will have other um, theories and ideas about it, but um, yeah, one, one of the newest metro trains as well. Uh, it's like a guided busway. <laughs> yeah, it's like a guided busway. Yes. So we'll be on this train to uh, Châtelet, so yeah, let's head there. Something we've learned is how quickly we fly through these metro stops compared to something yeah. like the underground, which we'll see later. Imagine Leicester Square to Covent Garden, but everywhere, essentially. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for us to brave the absolute maze that is Châtelet Station. It's infinite, it just keeps going. I know. <laughs> It just keeps going. Oh, it's, the oh, it's not even found. working. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's finally ended. So many long walkways, and we're not even there yet. Well, after what felt like 24 years, we finally made it to the RERB platforms. Ah, so an RER explanation for the non-accustomed to Paris. So, RER is a bit of a mix mass of various bits of former commuter railway around Paris, joined together with tunnels through the section. Some of it's run by the RATP, like Line A behind you, some of it's run by SNCF, like Line D, and some of it's run by both, like Line B, the one we're getting on. It goes to the airports, it goes out beyond the centre of the city, which is just served by the metro, and is a kind of far-flung commuter service. Crossrail and Thameslink have been compared to it, but it's really a beast all of its own character. So a whole uh, one stop to uh, Gare du Nord. We've gone on a huge, massive urban railway to go a singular stop. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> no, so Gare du Nord, the uh, busiest station in Europe. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, London, Great Britain, that's where I'm going, no way. Not bad, eh? Yeah, this is, it's no Waterloo, but it's, it's not bad. So, we have different Eurostars. Myself and Richard are actually on a later one, which yeah. means we're going to actually have to leave Nick. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
it's time I have to go and uh, check into my Eurostar. Of course, I can't film security. So, uh, yeah, I'll say goodbye to these two and uh, I will see you at the Eurostar. So, see you when that happens. Well, I made it through security. Just in the lounge now. There's our train down there, I think. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get on our Eurostar. That was a nice waiting lounge, right. Well, here we go. All right, apparently it's coach six. Six, coach six, right, cool. This, this, is, this is Jish, by the way. Yes, a uh, random new character has appeared in the video. Right, well, here we are now. So if, uh, as long as nothing horrible goes wrong, we should be on our way to London. All right, well, goodbye, France. Back off to dingy England, great. Oh, it's, it's, it's a blow high. Where, where did that come from? Ah. Ah. <laughs> we love blow high, blow high supreme. Coming from a country with pretty much no high speed rail, it does always quite amaze me looking out of the window on trains like this. Let's see, uh, actually, how fast are we going right now? Let's double check. A speed of zero miles an hour, apparently, because my GPS is not working. Thanks, class 374. I think the maximum speed of these trains is 186 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I didn't know these trains showed trivia on the screens. That's pretty cool. Must be a, I think it's a 374 exclusive. I've never been on a 374 before. This is my uh, first time. Only ever done 373s before, which I guess is actually quite lucky thinking about it. Well, we're passing through Lille, so we're getting close to the Channel Tunnel now. We do tend to slow around, slow around? Uh, to slow down around the, uh, around sort of the Lille area. Uh, just because I guess there's just a lot of padding for allowances and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we're getting close to the tunnel now. It's getting exciting. We've just passed uh, Calais Fredon station and there's some Euro tunnel shuttles down there. So yes, Channel Tunnel is very imminent. It's ironic that in many places, you know, outside in Britain or whatever, I get terrible phone signal, but when I'm under the sea, I have signal. Typical. There we are, firmly back on uh, British soil. Also, the moment I uh, hit Britain, my uh, Wi-Fi connection on my phone just completely dies. Hmm. We've passed through Stratford International and the screens are saying we're approaching London, so yes, finally almost back on proper British soil. Alright, well, St Pancras, so all I have left now is to get to Temple at last. Now, because I am under a slight time constraint to get home from uh, London, I have to get a train back to Lincoln in like 50 minutes. So I'm going to take Thameslink to Blackfriars, then change to the tube at Blackfriars to go to Temple, and that should hopefully be it. Well, that was good timing. There was a train right there. Cool. Right, so to Blackfriars now. Another reason for getting Thameslink too is because, well, you know, before, last time, when I was doing Gaul and had to go through central London to get to the other side, I had a lot of comments telling me I should get Thameslink instead, so, you know, I'm going to do that to please you lot. You never realise quite how many announcements trains have in Britain until you go somewhere that isn't Britain. Like, in, in France, you just have station, station, and then here you've got all this rambling that they do. Oh, we're at Blackfriars, so I just need to get to the tube, 
and go one stop. All right, westbound's down this escalator and I think I hear a train pulling in. It's for the other platform, never mind. <laughs> So it looks like our lucky service is a circle line train, so uh, yeah, it's actually pulling in right this second. <laughs> Alright, well, Temple, we've done it. So, there you have it. Temple to Temple, Paris to London. This has to be probably a contender for the most insane journey I've ever done. <laughs> Literally like crossing the English Channel to go between stations of the same name and oh. Man, that was quite the undertaking. Like, comment, subscribe would be greatly appreciated because this was, yeah, like I said before, quite an undertaking, quite a big task. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I uh, suppose I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And of course, a huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members who are listed on screen now. Thank you for supporting the channel.